as you can see the um, <coughs> it's never pretty looking at the inside of the cavity this wall is, as you can see it's down a dead end alley so it's just there to serve a purpose so you see the stone's pretty pretty good Probably about 15 mil in there hopefully fingers crossed we're going to be sheltered here with us being between the houses and right next to gable end and a bit of an overhang Good morning from our new job, which is a rendered stone cottage, which is in, I think it's been six years on the market before they bought it, because it's a project, so they're not afraid of a project. We've worked for these guys before doing um, French doors, wasn't it? Putting French doors and lintels in. If it works, there's a banner. Oh yeah. Click on. <laughs> yeah. I'll put. I'll try and put it in. Last time I put it in, it just it just doesn't appear. I know I put it in, but it's just whether YouTube puts it in. Do you save it after you do it? Oh yeah. So yeah, Alex is still in the living room. Let me just. Uh, I'm studying the extension. Yeah. Yeah. Tell it's an old cottage. So I'm in the extension. Currently, this new foundation that they've dug for us and loaded out for us kindly was originally sat on an old stone wall, put the garden wall. So they built the extension onto the garden wall, which is crumbling away. So the plan is to new wall all the way up to the roof down there and return it back to the front there. And then it just, uh, I think they're gonna have to tidy it well. This is all speculating, but I should assume that they were going to tidy the render up. Patch the render back to our brickwork. But we'll tie that in as best we can with bluebird ties or something similar. As you can see, the um, <clears throat> it's never pretty looking at the inside of a cavity. Wowzers. So yeah, they've put these in just to um, take this weight, which is, uh, I like, it's a great idea. They've even got the same. No, no, we had the... As bolts, weren't they? Yeah. We used the same sort of thing <coughs> on the uh, steel job we did. But yeah, it's a, it's a doer upper. It was originally got planning for a two story extension, but they're not going to bother. They're just going to tidy it up and, and um, sell it on. So you can see it's stone, it's wonky. Uh, this is going to be a huge cavity when we're done because we're going to be out here. So um, I think we're going to put a couple of pillars in the back of the wall here because we can't tie into that because it's too far away. It's um, it's one of those where you just, you start knocking things down, you start finding things. Luckily we didn't get we didn't get to knock this one down, did we? Yeah. So uh, we only came and looked at it last week and they've dropped it, dug it and concreted it since then, loaded all the bricks out and they were actually ready for us yesterday. And we were tied up. So um, as you can see, concrete's level with the floor. And ground level's out a bit higher outside. So we're going to run visqueen at the bottom and run it up and back over to the damp course. I think we're going to put two damp courses in as well. I'm going to patch this bit of a hole up and we're going to get it. It's obviously not square. So we'll just have to take it to that corner and return it wherever we can. And if you look, they're actually Accrington's. They're great bricks. They're like, a, like an engineering brick. I've used these a few times. They're a, bit, they're a bit wonky. Well, the seconds basically, as you can see by the colours. And we use these on another job and they were a bit. But this wall, is, as you can see, it's down a dead end alley. So it's just there to serve a purpose and uh, save them rendering it. But um, we'll, make a, we'll make as best a job we can with them. So I'm talking too much again. Alex got the uh, stuff ready for the mix. I'm going to get the mix on. I'm going to get organised down here, get me cushion, and then um, get the laser out. So, um, catch you in a bit. Just 
quick one to show you. Since I've just caught you with that really smooth transition, let me tell you why you should get a ridge. Like I explained last time, the ridge can expand and hold up to 12 cards and still have room for your cash. So you've got plenty of space in your pocket as opposed to using standard bifolds or trifold wallets. It also comes with RFID blocking, so anyone trying to swipe your information, they can't do it while you've got a ridge. And ridge are also still doing the offer where you get 30% off if you get the key case with them. Space holds up to six keys and stops them jingling in your pockets. Uh, you can get these in a variety of colors in from carbon fiber to forged ember which I have here and many many others. Just be sure to look on the website for all the different options. You can also get an air tag with your wallet so you will never lose it again. Just get your tag connected on and you'll always find it. And if that isn't enough for you, then Ridge are still partnered up with Hennessy for their annual sweepstakes. So you're still in the chance of winning a Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor or 75k in cash. And to enter it's simple, just head over to the website and enter for free. And for every dollar you spend on the store, you get another entry up to 1,000 entries. And if you use our unique link, ridge.com slash bricklaying, you should get another 10 entries then as well. So plenty of opportunities to win. So there hasn't been a better time for you to get a new wallet a new key case, and possibly a new Bronco Velociraptor. You can get 10% off your orders if you just head over to Ridge and you, at the checkout use our code BRICKLAYING, B-R-I-C-K-L-A-Y-I-N-G, all caps. Or if you just head to the link in the description, ridge.com slash BRICKLAYING, you'll get 10% off your whole orders. So, massive thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video, and we will crack on with the video. Back to talking about bricks. This the laser is not set to any particular height, it's just sat on its level. You see the other line there. It's just shine down on the stone at the bottom there. So obviously that's damp course level in the house. Well there's probably no damp course in it, I'm guessing. But um, we're gonna put one at the bottom and then we're gonna put another one further up. So um patch that little hole for them, they asked us to patch that. So quick way to check your level level with your rope with your cross line level is just measure it so we've got 315 there keep it again we've got 300 exactly keep it again this is 310 and finally, here we've got three, three fifteen again. So that end and that end are within a couple of mil, and then it comes up in the middle, which is fine. We'll get that in a couple of holes. It's pretty tender in it at the most, so that's not bad. That they mix this, uh, they mix this themselves. With the, uh, the, let me show you this mixer. With the, um, look at that. Don't worry, with the metal top, the old motor, still going strong. Obviously, they've looked after the drums still perfectly round. Look at that, the old flat paddles with no holes in. It's in excellent condition. I love that drum. But yeah, a classic retro. But as they say, they don't make things like they used to. Our drum's a bit battered. So clean, but battered. Right, so I'm going to get a little corner up there. And then we're going to put a dead man here. And run through, see what the bond is. Oh. So yeah. Oh yeah, we're going to have to move that spot board. It's, um, it's in the way. The, the uh, na entry gets narrow as you go further down. <laughs> so I'm going to have to give Alex the, the narrow end. I'll be able to move. Put the board up here. I'm going to put a board in the hole there. And uh, I think as we go higher, we'll just put, uh, we'll put another stand higher the board up on the inside. Yeah, we'll do that. Al. We'll do that. As we go higher here, mm -hmm. we'll bring another stand, put another spot board and stack the stands so the spot board will be up here then. Okay. It just, it just saves messing around, doesn't it? 
we've got room at that end for one. So, um, there's plenty of waffle to cut out. Let's get the camera set up. There we go. We've had the laser on here, we've seen on the time lapse. So, that's our straight line. Brings us up there. And we're building plums, so it's going to be tight rendered there, so it's going to be set back a bit up here. But we want to build it straight. We're just going to tie into this. I know it's a bit rough and ready, but we're just going to tie into that and then the render can cover the horrible joint. You can either put a stop bead on it or put a an angle bead on the, on the corner, render to the corner. But uh, obviously it needs patching up because the roof's getting extended out onto the new brickwork as well, which is coming out to about here. We're about 50 mil off the path. And I'm going to run through. And we've got a laser set up here. And there's that laser line. It's a bit darker down here, you can see it better. So you see the stone's pretty, pretty good. Probably about 15 mil in there, all the way up. Then we're lining up with that timber at the top. There's the plumb line we've got. It's the plumb bob line of the laser. So, I'm going to get this all marked up, I'm just putting a few pencil marks at that so we can follow it. I'm going down with a spirit level after. Here. Yeah. Lovely stone that. Shame it's been rendered over. But this corner here is absolutely soaked. Obviously it's been leaking up there, it's, the ground's higher. So right, let's get these marks on. Mix is nearly done. Once that's mixed, get cracking. Progress, 3%, it's about to die. <laughs> there you go, progress. So now we see, can see where we're going now. To be honest, I thought we'd be doing this until bloody lunchtime, so it's nice to see that we have a uh, rough idea of what we're doing now. So we're gonna have a quick break and we'll uh, catch you there. Right. Back from break. So just threw them blocking. Gives us know where we're going now, we're going to put the rest of it in face right now because it's going to come above that. But um, <clears throat> when we get to here we're going to have to wrap the viscoom round because of this floor level here to protect it. That ends okay because you've got the, the floor levels higher in the toilet for some reason. So we're okay there. Um, it's a oh, 20th of June, July? 20th of July. And I'm due a, an appointment on the 2nd of August for a pre-op for my hip. I am really struggling today. Really struggling. I can barely walk. So this is really a real struggle. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it was up and down ladders yesterday and that's really done me in. So it's not much fun at the moment. But um, being self-employed, anyone else who's self-employed will know. It's just you've got to get on with it and got to keep going. So that's me moan over with. I'm going to get this sample camera set up quite high up if I can. Just to try and get, get this in. Start on these reds now. I'll have to be here in a minute. I'm going to get this mortar knocked up a little bit, get it a bit wetter. A bit on the stiff side. So yeah. Let's get back to it.
Right, let's just turn the radio down. Right, there we go. Whip, whipped a quick corner up after, before dinner. As I say, it's going to be a ropey where it meets that, but obviously you're going to have to extend that render. So there you go. That's what you call a big cavity. We've put this this green in that drops down, stop any damp penetrating from the ground, and it also goes over the wall. Same here, but we've stepped it so it's not so it, there isn't too much of it on show. Like I say, this is just a dead end entry down here, so it doesn't matter. There's a bit of a screen on the show down here. It's just purely um, practical. So what I've just done now is I've just got uh, this little. Um, been after one of these for ages because Charlie Collinson told me to get one, and what Charlie Collinson says is usually good advice, and it is. So we put this up before break. Use the T clamp. Our um, T clamp, we've got this, our straight edge. This isn't box section, this is a conservatory reinforcement that I've got when I used to do conservatories. We've got a Dutch pin at the top, piece of timber just to stop it going too far against the wall. So we've got a gap, we can get the line in. And I've just marked the gauge up there, which is four to a foot. From there to there is exactly 29 courses at four to a foot. So each course is three inch. That's how I learnt. When I was an apprentice, that's what we were doing, four to a foot. So yeah, sun's coming around a bit now. As you can see, there's plenty of room up this end, but it narrows right off down there. But we're flying anyway. I can put a, put a profile on that tomorrow, one of the Blakes, and I can take that off tomorrow. I might even leave it on. And we can put our intermediate profile on there, which goes in. But as, as anyway, whatever happens, we're set up. We've gone a bit, a bit careful with the damps. See, we're taking the damp up there and we've gone and brought it up the wall three courses. Kept it as low as we could, but obviously it's above that ground in there, so we're going to put two damps in that bit. This section here, the internal is going to step in, so this bit here is going to be a proper cavity wall. We're going to have to put at least one pillar, probably in the middle of there, to give it some strength. I think I'm just going to put a load of, insula load of insulation in this because obviously we can't tie this to that. Uh, they don't make 400 mil tie wires, not yet anyway. As Alex said, this in the future, big cavities. Can you imagine um, the amount of polystyrene balls it takes to fill this? Oh god, don't. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this bit. Um, we'll see. We might just put a damp up there and just gob it up, whatever. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's a cut. It's a Cold bridging spot again, isn't it? So we'll try to keep the cavity as open as we can. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that open actually, and the insulation can run through there. We'll just try and tidy up a little bit, maybe. But that's giving it a bit of strength. Sure so, yeah. Patch it. Oh, yeah, Alex done it and patched the holes up that were left out for some reason. So um, you just explained to him on the mic now that. Oh, there's two, two big holes just in the wall for some random reason. I don't know what they were there for. We should have filmed this when we came to look at it, but th this this was basically sat on an old stone wall, which just butted up to the house. So this corner was, as you can see, see how, put, how wet the corner still is. Soaked. So it's all getting to dry out a bit now. I mean, it's, until this roof's fixed, it's going to carry on getting wet, but it's all part of the plan. So we've got a profile up, we've got a corner up, we've got six courses we can whack up straight away. A um, bit of mortar to knock up from this morning, now it's getting a mix on now. And it's just after one o'clock. Yeah, 20 past one. So let's get stuck in. Well, I, I spoke about the, the new toy the other day. I better spin around so you know who, what make it is. Just in case, mm -hmm. in case you didn't know. But ah, it's a little rascal. It's just so light. No cord hanging out the back of it. No mess around with cables. And it's, it's a powerful little thing as well. Solid stone that by the way. Just gives it a little push that the uh, other drill can't. Yeah. Oh, that's a bluebird. And where are they? 
there underneath Dad's feet. Well, they're called tie wires. Someone's been to us about them, so we should try putting them in, so I'm going to give them a whirl on this job. See how they work out. I can't see the captain on, to be honest. Here we go. Now, I still don't see how water turns be better than that. I don't know.
two five minutes to fill in. Is there enough to scrape me shit a couple of crust joints? Yeah. Probably not. 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 Probably
Right, end of day one. Now that's not bad progress. Flat start, apart from, well it's loaded out so it wasn't flat flat, but we had to set out, work our levels out, set it out, decide where the, the um, our tanking was going in, where the DPU suit was going to go in. So this can stay up, that's going to get us up to there. Got a corner up 15, 15 to go, so I can just whack a profile on that tomorrow. So I must forget profiles tomorrow on. One external, one internal. Hopefully, don't know what the weather's forecast, but I don't think it's forecast too good. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be sheltered here. With us being between the houses and right next to Gable End and a bit of an overhang. I think we might just get um, a couple of eight before sheets from the garage back home and um, stick them over the top. Hopefully, hopefully they'll help. Um, so yeah, I'm going to join up. Alex is just going to tidy up and then I'll clean the mixer and then it's out of here. So I'll catch you tomorrow.